Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the solution for question 3 on the January 2024 CSEC Mathematics Paper 2. We begin with question 3 part A. It says in triangle ABC, AC is 8 cm, BC is 5 cm, and the third side, AB, has been drawn on the paper, um, drawn and measured to be 6 cm. So using a ruler and compass only, construct triangle ABC, the line AB has been drawn as said. So in order to complete the question, we need to get a compass. And we need to use that compass to draw two lines, lines AC, lines BC. So grab a compass. And once you get your compass, you make sure that you put your compass point at A. But before you do that, you need to measure, since the question says 8 centimeters, you need to measure 8 centimeters on your compass radius. And here's 8 centimeter on my digital compass. So I'm going to put the point there, right at the end. And I'm going to make an arc. Now, make a big enough arc because you do not know exactly where your lines are going to intersect or where your arcs are going to intersect. So generally, as a rule, just make a big enough arc so that once you're finished, you don't have to go back and do it over or add another part for it to intersect. So once we do that, we go to the point um, B, and we need to make another arc BC, which is 5 centimeters. So I'm going to put my compass point there at the end of the line and measure, or do that before, measure 5 centimeters. Um, here's my 5 centimeters there. And now I'm going to make another arc. Once I do that, my my lines intersect at this point. My two arcs intersect here, and that is what I want. I want an intersection point. Then I'm going to draw my lines AC starting here, where the two lines intersect, and taking it to the point there, A. Also from the point B to that same intersection point. Um, all right, there we go. Now, once you've done that, my line is giving me a little bit of trouble there, but that's the general idea. Um, once you've done that, then that's the end of the construction. Now we need to measure and state the value of angle BAC. So to do that, you need to grab a protractor and see if we can measure the sides of angle BAC. Of course, you should be able to use a protractor and having settled there um, on our zero line you notice that the size of the angle BAC that's the size of the angle here angle BAC BAC that's the angle here you notice that it is 40 degrees and so that is the size of the angle and you would have been finished with your construction from that. So grab a compass, measure the radius to be 8 centimeters, stick it in the point at A, make an arc, do the same thing at point B of 5 centimeters, create the arc. Wherever those arcs intersect, then you join your join your line. And of course I was talking about my line there not being a perfect line, but there's a better one. And so you join your line there and then question asks us to measure the angle, you grab your protractor, you line it up and you measure the angle there. You should get 40 degrees. Moving on to the next part of our question. We have a triangle. It says the diagram below shows an equilateral triangle FGH and the base is 13 centimeters. Of course, since it's equilateral, then all the sides are 13 centimeters. And we are asked to calculate the value of H. To calculate the value of H, we use the idea that if you draw a straight line, perpendicular line, from H to any other side, from H to FG, um, for example, or G to the other side, that line will bisect this side here. So it will cut it in two. And what you'll end up with is a triangle, a right angle triangle, as the diagram shows where 
This side being cut in two gives you 6.5 centimeters. And of course, this side still being 13 centimeters and our H here. Using Pythagoras' theorem, we can calculate the value of H. So using Pythagoras' theorem, H squared plus 6.5 squared is equal to 13 squared. And that means that H squared is now equal to 13 squared minus 6.5 squared. Plug that into your calculator. It should tell you that H squared is equal to 126.75. And h is therefore equal to the square root of 126.75. And of course, that gives 11.3 when you roll it off to one decimal place. Moving on to the next question, we have a diagram. The diagram below shows three triangles, P, Q, and R. Triangles Q and R are images of triangle P after it undergoes a double transformation. So we look at our triangles here and here, and we are asked some questions. The first one is to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle P onto R. So the question is, how does P get to R? And by observation, you can realize that this is a push here that is being pushed in this direction. And because of, of that, it is a translation. And to find what the vector is, because a translation needs a vector, we can simply count from one point on our object to the similar point on our image. And counting from here to here, we realize that we go across one, two, and go up one, two, three, four. So our transformation that the transformation that maps P onto R is a translation translation 2 4 where T 4 is the 2 4 is the vector not T 4 2 4 um, so we go pick a point similar point we decide to count 1 2 then 1 2 3 4 of course there's a formula for this you can say this point minus that point and that way you can get it so you could go ahead and write down the coordinate here which is 3 4 and then subtract this similar point here which is 1 1 0 and that would give you 2 4 just the same but it's pretty easy to count once you have once you have the graph paper there it's probably easier just to count it um, 1 2 in that direction and 4 up all right, so now that we have answered that, our transformation is a translation, T24. How does triangle R get onto triangle Q? That's the next question. So how does triangle R get onto triangle Q? And looking at R and Q, you realize that they're facing each other in terms of this side is facing that side. And that is a hint that is telling you that this is a reflection. Of course, when it's a reflection, the mirror is exactly between the object and the image and you can see that the mirror is actually right here so that the object and the image are equal distances apart from it and from that we know that the transformation then is a reflection and this line here x equal one is the mirror so we can go ahead and write that the transformation is a reflection in the line x equal 1. And you could actually just go ahead and write the same thing, write, write a similar sentence for, for um, part A. Not that you're going to get a mark for the full sentence. You need to say two things. It's a translation, and you need to say what the vector is. And in this part of the answer, you need to say that it's a reflection and you need to state what the mirror is. That's essentially what the examiner will be looking for. And that brings us to the end of our question. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe before you go. Thank you for your support. And if you know somebody who needs help with these kind of things, kindly share. 
and give them a recommendation again continue to work hard and until next time